Hey guys, looks like it's beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Review today. Today's beer comes from Star Hill. Uh, this brewery is up in Crozet, Virginia, up, uh, near Charlottesville, we'll put it that way. Uh, guys, uh, I did a beer from theirs the other day. Uh, Jack uh, works there at the brewery. I don't know what his job description is or how far up the chain he is. Contacted me and said, oh, I'm going to send you a couple of beers. And I said, absolutely. So he sent them. I was up there, did a motorcycle ride up there many, many years ago, four or five years ago, maybe even longer. And uh, met the head brewer at the time and actually have actually done a couple of beer festivals back then uh, and poured for them uh, on those. Uh, but I don't think that head brewer is still there. I think they got somebody else as a head brewer now and uh, they are doing some a lot more tastier stuff. Uh, I did drink some of their stuff uh, back then. Uh, their Northern Lights and several of their beers were very tasty. I uh, tried most of them at the brewery at uh, when I was there the last time. It was a very nice motorcycle ride. We had a couple of breweries that day and they were the first one on the stop. And I did enjoy it. They have a very, they had a very nice brewery there. Whether they've expanded or changed or moved, uh, I kind of got a feeling they're still in the same place. But uh, things change over time. Uh, uh, brewers come and go, and uh, breweries expand and do different things. Especially if there's a different guy uh, running the show or, or, or brewing different stuff. So uh, brewers are. are, are a special breed, guys. I want to put it that way. Uh, what this head brewer want to brew, the next head brewer may want to brew something a little different. Uh, of course, they have flagship beers and try to keep to those recipes, but he wants to try. If he has any control, he wants to brew some of his own stuff and, and, and put out some new stuff instead of brewing the same beers over and 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 over again. So, uh, <clears throat> and they've done that. Um, they've changed up some things and or brewing different stuff and some bigger beers. Uh, uh, so when he contacted me and said, hey, yeah, I'll send them to me. I'd be happy to review them. So this one is their double bass. And it's B-A-S-S. -S. I don't think it's double bass. Uh, so I think it's their double bass. And what that is, guys, this is, and it's got a very nice picture of some chocolate cookies or brownies or something with chocolate dripping off of it. And it says double bass double chocolate stout. This comes in at 7.8% ABV alcohol by volume. But the biggest thing that I know different about this, now they have, they're writing in big, bright blue ink. Packaged on 1221 of 16. Well today is the 11th of January. This is less than a month old. Unless I get stuff shipped to me from guys like this at the brewery, I can't get beers this fresh unless I go to a brewery and pick them up there. If I wait for it to go through the distribution cycles and the clowns that control the distribution in Virginia, let this shit set on the damn floors for a month, two, three months. That's one of the problem I've had with the Bell's beers. They ship them out and then it gets to the brewery, I mean to the uh, uh, distribution center, the warehouse, and it sets there for months before they put it on the shelf. And I go to the grocery store or whatever and uh, be bells on the shelf and it'll be three, four, five months old. I'm not gonna buy a uh, two hearted ale that's five months old. Not this guy. Not gonna do it. It'll sit there. Let some other sucker come come pick it up. Uh, and even now that they've changed the labels on the bells two hearted ale, uh, just notice the Kroger store down here is carrying it with the new label on it, but it's still two months old. With the new label, it's two months old. 
shouldn't take that long for it to show up in the store. It shouldn't take two months for it to show up in the store. If it does, we got a problem in transportation, distribution, and delivery there somewhere. If you've got an IPA or a double IPA, it's taking two months from the time it's shipped from the brewery to the time it shows up in the store to buy it. Something's wrong. There's something going on there that needs to be corrected. So, But I appreciate Jack contacting me and sending me the two beers from Star Hill uh, that he did. So we're going to review. This is the, uh, the second one. And the picture on it looks very awesome. And the description sounds very damn tasty. I love a nice chocolate stout. Uh, especially when it gets up to the magnitude of this. 7.9%. Uh, should be able to tell you, that's almost an 8 percenter, guys. Uh, that's to the category of uh, an imperial uh, stout almost. So it's kicking the door on the imperial stout. And this is considered a sweet stout by Rate Beer. And Beer Advocate has it listed as a uh, American Double Imperial Stout. So we're right on the borderline there. I don't know where the cutoff line is, whether it's 7.5 or 7.9 or 8 percent. It's real close to the double. So... Almost eight percent. So this uh, this should be a very tasty beer. I'm expecting it to be a very tasty beer. And whether they've done it before or not, I'm not sure. I don't think they have. I think this the two beers they sent me were new offerings from Star Hill. So uh, I appreciate Jack contacting me and sending me these. I hope we can uh, uh, continue to do to work together and uh, him send me uh, some new releases. I'm that way with uh, Six Point and and. Uh, uh, Lagunitas, uh, so I, I want to continue those relationships, but I'm going to be, you know, I don't want to piss anybody off, but I'm going to give you an honest opinion, guys. If I, if I don't think the beer is an A beer, I'm going to tell you I don't think it's an A beer. If it is an A beer, I'm going to tell you whether rate beer or beer advocate or untapped says it is, makes, uh, doesn't make a rat's ass to me. I'm going to tell you what I think. So, it's just me. With uh, 2,300 beer reviews, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you what I think. No matter what I've read, I'm going to tell you what my palate's tasting and what I think of the beer and what the information they're giving me on the beer. The ABV, the IBUs, and the bottled on date. If it's got an enjoy by date or a best by date, that's going to cost you. Screw that shit. Uh, tell me when it was put in the bottle or the can. Otherwise, it's going to cost you. And they're doing this bright blue ink like Eierbacher does. Uh, big fan of that. Two thumbs up to the guys up there for going to this bright blue ink. Very nice. And packaged on date. Bottled on date. That's what we want. So, uh, enough about all of that. Commercial description. And we probably got five minutes into the beer and I ain't even got the damn cap open on it. A lot of people fuss about that. But I got to get stuff off my chest and tell you what I think. Uh, commercial. And they sent me, just like they did on the last one, this nice laminated flyer here, make a nice placemat for the deck outside, which I'll probably save and use for that. Very nice. A uh, very colorful picture, guys. All the information you want on there, other than the IBUs, which is not critical for this style of beer. It's not an IPA or a double IPA. It says here, espresso in color, this rich imperial stout is all about the malt and chocolate. Aromas of dark chocolate, mocha, and vanilla arise from cocoa additions. Robust bittersweet chocolate and dark fruit lead into a smooth finish. The malt is marish otter, chocolate crystal, car carafa, two golden oats, hops are Apollo, East Kent Goldings. Well, I've not brewed with Apollo before, but I, I have with the East Kent Goldings. That's a European hops. That's... Uh, what they would use over there. It has more of a floral, herbal, earthy hop. Uh, and it says here the stats are 7.8% alcohol. It says here cocoa powder, cocoa nibs, vanilla beans, and lactose they've used in this beer. And they give you some pairings. Food is uh, hoisin, glaze, baby back ribs, cheesy, or aged, goat, gouda, and dessert is raspberry and chocolate tar served in a snifter. It says sales to retail January 1st. So, brand new beer from these guys. So, once again, Jack, thank you, my brother, for sending these beers down to me. Uh, I'm looking forward to come up and, and visit you all again. And uh, I'll touch base with you when the summertime gets here, or spring, whenever. And we'll ride a motorcycle up there and check you out again. Uh, it's been quite a few years since I've been up there. And I'd like to come back up there and visit you all again.
<coughs> nothing else we need to talk about so let's get on with it let's get the cap off this bad boy and while we're doing that <coughs> excuse me uh, I will tell you cuisine is buttery Greek little Havarti Swiss general chocolate digestive meat beef smoked meat game and grilled meat uh, glass water pint back and on tumbler snifter oversized wine glass I got my favorite snifter yeah, doesn't seem to be too, too awfully carbonated, and since it can be solid for a long period of time, didn't pour hardly any head. It's not even covering the top of the beer. Uh, it's pretty dark, guys. I'm not seeing maybe just a hint of some red ribbiness around the thin part of the glass. Pretty dark beer. Let's get a nose to it. They definitely get some coffee notes there, some espresso coffee. And I don't think they they may have used some coffee in this because it does say espresso. Espresso in color. I'm getting a little bit of coffee notes on the nose. Not a big chocolatey notes on the nose. Might get a little more. It's right out of the fridge. So a lot of times those aromas don't come out. A lot of times I'll get them in the taste, but not in the aromas right off the bat when it's 40 degrees. Let's dive in. Let's see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Jack. Very easy drinking. Hints of some coffee. Hints of some bittersweet chocolate. Slight hint of some vanilla. A nice sweetness to the back end, which tells me that he's used lactose. Very easy drinking for a 7.8%. Alcohol is super well hidden. Very well made. But it's not so intense in either the coffee or the chocolate or anything that it's going to be off-putting to the entry-level palate. Somebody that's getting into the stouts, this would probably be a good one, even though it's almost an 8%er. If, if you've never had an imperial stout, this would be an excellent one to go from a regular stout of 6%er, 6 65 maybe even 7%er to get into something with a little bit more alcohol and not be too overpowering for your palate. So, that tastes pretty good. Yeah, I like that. To me, it could have just a little bit more chocolateiness to it. It could have just a little more carbonation to it. As you can see, it's flat on the top of the beer. There is no creaminess or any of that kind of stuff. Maybe they could throw some little bit of flaked oats or something in there. They'll get a little bit of more creamy mouthfeel. But it's right out of the fridge. Let's let it warm up a little bit and come up to room temperature. Might step out on the deck and uh, uh, hit me a cigar for a little bit while it comes up to room temperature. It's a little warmer out there to, today. It's uh, got up to almost 50 degrees and it's supposed to get warmer as the night goes and uh, tomorrow's supposed to get up into the 60s. Today's the 11th, tomorrow's the 12th, my birthday. I'll be a whopping 60 years old tomorrow. Some days I feel that old, some days I feel older, some days I don't feel that old. Five days I get up I feel like an 18 year old. I just can't find one. All right, guys, let's let it warm up. I'll come back and we'll do the final show. All right, guys, I'm back. Got a little bit left here. To me, it's still a little thin for a uh, imperial stout or a sweet stout. It's just a magnitude of 7.8%, almost 8%. I think, my opinion, just my opinion, and that, and 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee at 7 Eleven, and that, and $5 will get you one at Starbucks. Uh, my opinion is they can use a little bit of flaked oats on this to give it a little bit creamier mouthfeel. Uh, I would like to see a little more chocolatiness in this beer uh, for a sweet stout. But it is a very well made beer. Uh, the alcohol is super well hidden. Uh, 
They brew these beers, like I told you guys, to get the average drinkers into something with a little more taste. Uh, this this one has a little bit stronger ABV to it. Uh, so if you had a 6%, 6.5% stout, yeah, this would be a good one to step up to the next one with a little bit more alcohol. Uh, but they are uh, a lot of beers that has a bigger coffee note to them. There are a lot of beers that have a bigger chocolate note to them. And there are beers that have a little more creamier mouthfeel note to them. But this is a good uh, representation of a sweet stout. Uh, very nicely done. And from what I'm seeing on Rate Beer and Beer Advocate, uh, it's probably a new release. It's something that they just come out with. And, uh, and Jack has uh, sent me these two new releases for me to review. And uh, I appreciate it very much, Jack. I, I think they are very well-made beers. I, I do. I enjoyed them. Uh, the first one was kind of, uh, it was in the B category. Uh, but I am a big fan of them using this bright blue ink packaged on date where you can see it like Wirebacker does their beers. Uh, very nice. I like how they do that, and, and it's not an enjoyed by date or anything like that, or best buy. Uh, package on date is what we want to see. ABV on the label. I'd be using not that critical on this style of beer. If it was an IPA, I would be fussing about that. We didn't have it. So, uh, the more information they put on the label and on the bottle or on the can, the better off it is for us uh, being craft beer buyers. And, uh, uh, Better for them, better for us, better for everybody. So the more information, the better off we are. And a lot of these breweries use the same labels over and over and over and over and over again, whether the recipe changes or not, and the alcohol changes or not, and they want to use the same label. But if it's a beer that's brewed once and they still don't put it on there, I got a problem with that. So, Jack, thanks again, my friend, my brother, for sending me the beers. Uh, Y'all are definitely... De Stepping up to the plate and doing better beers. I would like to try a little bit more of your bigger beers. Uh, your uh, your beers that are made for the seasoned craft beer drinkers. Your 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 percenters. Uh, I understand uh, those are more expensive beers to brew. And some of your barrel aged stuff if you're doing that. A uh, barrel aged version of this would probably be pretty freaking awesome. So let's do the final chug on this one. I still, I'm getting very strong coffee notes. Even though, as far as I know, there is no coffee being introduced into this beer. I don't know where the coffee comes from, whether they did put some espresso in there. It doesn't mention that there's any cold brew coffee added to this beer, but I am getting coffee notes. Final chug. That is a tasty beer, guys. It really is. <clears throat> and now that I've done the beer reviews that I've done and tasted as many different beers from the three percenters all the way up to the 20-some percent of beers, uh, this falls into a pretty easy drinking category as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a, a nice beer to pick up and it's 7.8 percent i don't know whether this is a four pack version or even they do this in a six pack version i'm not sure how this is packaged uh once you start getting into the seven eight nine percenters they start dropping those back to the four packs because it's more expensive to brew those beers than it is a, a lower abv beer so i'm not exactly sure how they package this i've not seen it in the stores yet <laughs> and and like i told you the distribution in this state of virginia is uh Horrible. It is horrendous. Even now that this is done and, and packaged, I wouldn't be afraid to say uh, I won't see this in the stores till probably March or April, to be honest about it, guys. It takes that long for these clowns that, that control the distribution around here uh, to get these beers under the stores. So the bigger the beer is, the better off you're going to be because it's not going to go bad. If you're producing a 6% IPA or a 7 or 8% double IPA and it takes 3 to 4 months to get it into the store, you're sucking hind tits as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not going to buy the beers when they've been sitting that long. 
just not going to do it. But now that Jack has sent me this directly from the brewery, and these are freshly produced beers, so fresh that we don't have a lot of ratings from these uh, sites that uh, rate the beer, Beer Advocate rate beer. Uh, I find them very, very tasty. I do. To me, guys, this is an A beer. Uh, I'm going to give this an A to A minus. Uh, numeric rating on this one, guys, would be 92. I would love to taste a bourbon barrel version of this. This would probably be very good. I'm a sucker for those kind of beers. I really am. Well, let's go over to uh, Rate Beer. I mean, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate doesn't have any scores. New beer. Uh, not enough people have commented. Let's look real quick. One, one person has commented on this beer. And uh, he is in... Uh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say where he picked it up at. All right, over to uh, Rate Beer. Rate Beer has 89 overall and 81 in the style. Uh, I think it's a tad better than that, but I wouldn't argue with those numbers. Uh, if it didn't have a date on it, a bright blue label or a Best Buy or Enjoy Buy label, I would not give it the A. I would probably drop it back to the B+. Uh, but with that bright blue ink that they're using, very easy to read, whether it's hot on the shelf or chilled out of the fridge or out of the cooler, you can see that date, and it's a packaged on date, not a Best Buy or Enjoy Buy date. There are a few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They've got exactly ten reviews, and that's what they require to give it a grade. And some people think this beer is in the three category. There are some fours. Most of them are in the upper threes. So, uh. I, I did enjoy this beer. I thought it was I thought it was a very tasty beer, guys. So, uh, I am because they've got the bright blue ink on there, and uh, it's got the ABV on the bottle. It is it's worthy. Uh, my recommendation is to use a little bit of flaked oats on it to give it a little creamier mouthfeel, and maybe a little bit more chocolate moss to give it a little bit more chocolatey taste. Since they've got all that chocolate bars and stuff on the label and dripping with chocolate on there. I think the chocolate needs to be a little heavier with what the picture is to go with the label on it. So, uh, just my two cents, just my opinion. And for our final check-in, we'll step over to Untapped, and they have it at 3.93, which is right at their A category, guys. Uh, very tasty beer, and I agree. That's uh, that's about where I would put it. It's right at the, at the bottom end of the A category. Very nice. So, Jack, once again, my friend, my brother, I do appreciate you contacting me and sending me those beers from Star Hill. I'm looking forward to maybe tasting some more stuff from you guys and maybe coming up and visiting y'all uh, once motorcycle weather comes back around. So, if you've had this one from Star Hill, they're double base. Let me know what you think. Uh, I enjoyed this. It's very nice. I would probably buy this beer. I would especially probably would buy the bourbon barrel version if they did it. So, if you've had this one from them, let me know what you think, guys, and come on back tomorrow. Let's stick something out of the fridge. See you then.